Cheers. Hi, I'm Shez. I'm Gav. And this is our Beneteau Oceanus 430. We made our dream a reality. Welcome aboard to Astrid the Wombat. Last episode, we travelled here to the Matahari Dive Resort in Tulumban, Bali. Tulumban is famous for the site of the wreck of the USAT Liberty, and we were here to dive the Liberty, but also the many dive sites that were surrounding this dive resort and along the coastline. Up behind, you can see Mount Agung, an active volcano. Terrific for dive photography because the sand is in fact black and the colours really show out. So we're so excited to be here. Last episode, we ticked off our bucket list dive item, the Rhinopius frondosa. And in this episode, come with us to 35 metres below to find the pygmy seahorse. We had further dives here on a couple more wrecks and our first dive today is in fact back on the USAT Liberty again. Are you having a good time so far? That's horrible. I 
amazing dives, cold beers, good friends. Couldn't get any worse, Merle. I got two weeks left. Yeah. <laughs> Just going to the local supermarket to get some Bakari sweat. It's like a Gatorade kind of thing. They keep us hydrated between dives and uh, some bottled water. Um, let's have a look here. So it was a negative on the uh, drinks at that supermarket. They had them, but they were not cold. And it's so hot here that we've only got a little tiny fridge in our room, so we need them to uh, preferably start cold. This whole area is basically a whole lot of dive resorts um, that you can stay at or just come to and dive, primarily for the Liberty. Hey friends, highlight of day three. Diving with Shane on the Boga Wreck. Is that what he said? The Boga? Boga? What is that? Boga Wreck. Pretty cool. Watching him uh, become a good diver. It's pretty cool. Tell us about the wreck. It's an Indonesian patrol boat from the 70s. They dropped it because they wanted to have another tourist site for people to dive on. It's pretty average, there's not much growth on it and um, I'd say probably it would be good in another 20 years. Yeah. It's nowhere near as good as the Liberty though. The Liberty's got it, got it going on with all the growth and everything. It's really cool. But it was good to do it. I mean, now we know, right?
Shine again. Always. Shine's a whole lot again. Yeah, it shines a whole lot again. I like to watch him progress. It's Take good. Take note. <laughs> <laughs> Take note. Take note. Take note. Highlight would be the, um, the sec my second dive on the Liberty. This time the working camera and uh, just capturing the reaction. Um, just great sights today. Good diving. Strong current coming home on the last dive. But we made some good decisions and I'm happy with that. Yeah, so my favourite part of the day would have been the artificial reef. Um, sitting on the back of a um, moped with Bill. About how far down? Oh, good luck. 10, maybe 12 metres. That was pretty funny. And um, the bow, sitting on the bow with the Liberty, I believe, with um, Bill and Dave, that was um, really cool. We got some really cool photos, so uh, had, a, had a fun day. The last dive was very exhausting, um, but learned a lot from the last dive. So, and yeah, pass it over to Bill. <laughs> Tell us about your day. <laughs> My day was um, great. Didn't die. Very oh, good. Oh, oh, sorry. One more thing. Finished with a couple's massage with Bill. <laughs> it was absolutely lovely. Yeah, my highlight was the uh, couple's massage with Shane. <laughs> <laughs> really sensual. Yeah. Uh, it was, um, yeah, probably the photos and stuff. But yeah, the last time was um, difficult. Yeah. What was your highlight of the day? My highlight of the day was diving all of us with, oh gosh, don't go so close, was all of us diving together. I think it was my highlight. I love it when we're all diving as a group um, yeah. and it's pretty cool and you get to sort of, I don't know, experience everything together as a group. I think that's really nice. Um, I'm so that was my it wasn't highlight. our couple's massage. Our was... couple's massage was pretty good, but I don't think it sounded as um, action packed as the boys' couple yeah. massage. Um, yeah, so what's on for tomorrow? Jealous. What are we doing tomorrow? More dives. More dives? Anywhere in particular? Doing. You guys, Coral Garden in the morning? Coral Garden. Coral Garden in the morning, yeah. Starting at 8 a.m. drop off. Just see how we go. That's our last day of diving tomorrow, I believe. Isn't it? Yeah. No. Oh, no. At least, no, this is the end. Yeah, my last day of diving. I know. Yeah. See what happens. There you go. Well, what, hang on a minute. What we're doing tomorrow is we're going in search of the pygmy seahorse, which is incredibly exciting. And uh, that'll be dive one, and then we'll catch up with the boys um, for our second and third dives. But first dive, Gavin and I are going in search of pygmy seahorses, and I am beyond excited. Probably won't sleep tonight. Yeah, looking forward to going horse hunting. Horse riding. Watch the um, <laughs> pony club. The, the <laughs> Looking forward to going to pony club. The seahorse. The sign language. Oh, yeah. Sign language. <laughs> the next morning saw us all geared up and ready to go in search of the pygmy seahorse. The dive site was further down from the resort, as were the other dive sites that we experienced later that day. Drop-off was found here where you can see the traditional dive boats or the fishing boats along the beach there. And we often either walked through the stones to get to the dive site or we were in the back of a rusty old truck being driven around to where the sites were. You can see the Matahari Dive Resort there with the blue on the front. And as the drone goes up a little further where the trees are, the USAT Liberty is actually directly out in front of those trees there. So they do take you around there in the back of a ute uh, to get to that dive site and then you walk in across those stones that are quite tricky to get in. But today was gonna to be a particularly great day and the Pygmy Seahorse was a huge bucket list item for me. And I was pretty excited to get to the dive site and get down and see if we could find and photograph the Pygmy Seahorse. So come with us.
G'day everyone. I want to have a serious conversation about hunting seahorses, especially the pygmy ones, Jeez. and what it involves. Do you want to tell everyone what it involves or do you want me to? I'm here in a roll. I'm on a roll, am I? So we went, to, went for a dive today at um, the, probably one of the world's premier muck diving areas and this were well, normally supposed to be millions of critters, little things to look at and put, so we went, literally dropped down to 32 metres and then we mucked around there until we found one particular fan and on that one fan there was one tiny little pygmy seahorse that would be half a centimetre. What's that, what's half a centimetre in Imperial? Ten, a tenth of an inch probably. It's the tiniest little thing you've ever seen. Anyway, so we were there, we took a few photos and then we finished our dive. It's about that big. <laughs> the, um, photo, the photo, it's photo opportunity took about a minute. <laughs> yeah, Gab got the, the pics of it. I managed to get a lot of pictures of our um, guide's hand. <laughs> yeah, oh well. <laughs> but I did, well, we I did see it, it so. Yeah. But the um, dive was it. It was actually at almost 33 meters, so yeah. we went down to 33, saw it, and then literally made our way back up to the top, and that was our um, yep. that was our whole dive. It was a little challenging for me today. Um, you can probably hear it. I was smashed yesterday with a head cold. I think I'm coming out of it now, um, and I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to dive today. And I knew we had the pygmy seahorse booked in anyway. Had some real trouble equalizing to get down which is not like me I normally duck dive and I'm, I'm first to the bottom typically but um I had to do the whole up down up down um and at one point I thought I'm not going to get there it's going to have to be up to Gav to just go and get it and I'll walk back to shore but then I managed to um equalize and get down so I'm pretty stoked that I got to do that yeah so there you go insert picture here Big me say horse. Big me say horse. We're pretty stoked. We are very stoked. Yeah. After the um, <laughs> excitement of the pygmy seahorse, we. Um, went and did another dive at the drop off. I thought you were going to say we went and got a beer, but we didn't. No, we didn't. Because <laughs> we had another dive. <laughs> another dive at the drop off, um, which we've done a few times. And uh, we did it with uh, Dave and Bill and um, Shane. And um, they're currently getting massages, if you're wondering why we're, it's just the two of us. Um, but um, yeah, we went and did the drop off, saw a few nudies and Stuff. Yeah, heaps of those, um, I don't know what they're called, what are those yellow and blue eels called? Those little ones? Yeah. They're really cute. Yeah, they're super cute mm. and um, very snappy, which I really like. And well. um, insert footage of a whole bunch of different types of clownfish that are just swimming around. We, we, yeah. we took some uh, video of that too. So. We had, um, after the uh, lookout dive, we came back, had lunch, and then we did a third dive. The others um, didn't do a third dive today, um, but we went and did Suki's place, which is right out the front of the dive resort. And it's, um, uh, they've put a whole lot of like statues and stuff down there to build up reef, as well as like natural reef that's there. And I think it's actually, well, for me, I, I think it's one of my favorite dives here. Um, the Liberty is obviously amazing wreck dive, but in terms of just normal diving, I could stay down there yeah. for ages. It was really good. The I feel like the dive guides want you to motor somewhere yeah. on every dive. So instead of just getting in close to where we're going to dive, they make you go through a fair bit of air before you get there. I'm, I'm, I might be wrong, but I just, I don't know. It seems, do you, how do you think? Do you think that's a bit I of just, a plan? or Because I, I mean, I we think, could walk um, in literally a hundred meters closer to where we've got to go and not have to fight current to get there. Yeah, I think part of the problem yeah. is diving with um, 
lesser experienced divers. Not a problem because it's what we really love it. But um, the dive obviously has to be set up for the um, least experienced person. Anyway, yeah. it was good. It was good diving with everybody. Mm. And then just Gavin and I doing Suki's place this afternoon was excellent. It was um, it was so good. It was like a a nudie extravaganza. Oh, we just got to puddle around, and it didn't yeah. matter. The vis was maybe. 30 meters didn't yeah. matter it was great yeah tiny little bit of current for maybe the first minute yeah and then we were just could just sit around and do that our dive guides finally got to know us and just let us yeah be we've not... got an excellent dive guide though we've got the pick of the bunch yeah sharon's got a head stick you know trying to get the best photo of an eddy branch i'm trying to find an eel or on another bit of reef or it's just really good i could do that every yeah. day that was fantastic it was a really good dive and, and props to those guys too for trying to save the reef a bit, you know, putting in an artificial reef. It's it's really good. It's yeah. not it's not what it looks like. It's about um, the fact that they're giving it a crack. And they've got structures built to plant coral in and everything that's really taking off as well. So yeah. that's really cool yeah. to see. So it's not just... Yeah. And they're so, doing all this on the shoestring too. Yeah. There's no government million dollars here there or anything. They're just doing it by themselves to try and keep the coral going. It's really cool. But so <clears throat> we have, I think, the best dive guide here. His name is Putu, and um, he doesn't speak a whole lot of English at all. But one doesn't speak any English at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's been generous. <laughs> once you're uh, underwater, it doesn't matter, right? Like it's diving is the great leveler in terms of language because when you're underwater, you're relying upon hand signals, and um, we're all fluent in underwater language, and so that's when we really get to know him most underwater which I think is one of the really cool things about diving um, that language isn't a barrier he um, every day <laughs> he will tell us what time to get there and he has all our gear set up for us um, our stuff gets carried down to the water's edge by these ladies they are like they'd be 70 80 years old they'd be lucky to weigh 40 kilos and they balance two tanks on their head and gear and gear so two kits um on their head and walk all the way down the the beach and they get paid to do it so it's um they don't want you to do it if you go to do it it actually offends them because they're getting money that's how they're you know yeah, supporting their families as aussies we're we're used to just getting our own kit on and it feels wrong yeah you know, and off we go sort yeah. of thing but um it's a serious princess diving here you, you feel like a you feel like you're the king of the world when they someone lifts your BC up for you yeah. so you can pop it on and then yeah. they... <laughs> and even getting in the water, crazy. there's um, a few of the dives where to enter, it's they're really big rocks, like big rocks, and they're really round, and it's quite challenging just trying to walk on them to get in. The beach is all rocks, and uh, they mm. slide, and you can slip really easily. It's actually... I, th I think it would... Um, There'll be some people that wouldn't be able to do the dive simply because of the difficulty of the entry and certainly i've had trouble mm. but um putu holds my hand every time now and yeah. just until i can get in enough to float and on then my i back. smashed in for um, cutting, cutting my grass <laughs> no. but it is really hard because as you yeah. step on these rocks they move and slide and then it's when with all your gear on it's um really quite challenging yeah. but um he when we finish our dives Everything gets carried back for us or put on the truck if we've had to go on a truck to get to the site. We get back, all we do is rinse off our wetsuits mm. and our boots and camera gear. Camera gear mainly, because if, um, if you leave your fins and that in there, they'll be rinsed, everything will be rinsed. He washes yeah. all our gear for us and we go, we'll Here's wash your gear and he goes, no, 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 you guys go, I'll see you tomorrow. And he washes, every, all our gear's done, yeah. washed, hung up, locked away. like. We are being treated so well. We cannot recommend Matahari. Yeah, Matahari. Matahari divers. At, um, if we come again Tarman. with a group, we'll definitely we'll go for the start the same joint. Yeah, it's really good. It's really and good. And they've got a whole bunch of packages that um, so three day, four day, five day packages all with dives. And um, I feel like if you didn't take advantage of those, you, you're a bit silly because it includes breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It includes a free massage for an hour. And a drink every day. A as drink well. every day. It's just mint. And, and the they, food's they so love good. you. They just love you. Everyone's so happy. We needed a couple of towels today because our towels are wet from. Oh, no problem. We got four. We have our bathroom door locked or shut. So the air conditioning doesn't get into the bathroom because then we can keep the camera equipment there. You've got to be really careful with it going in this humidity into the cold of the room. 
it'll fog up and we mm. won't be able to get rid of the fog. So we've kept the bathroom warm for the camera gear and um, the downside is that our towels stay, stay oh, sorry. wet. So here's the thing, <laughs> uh, the, on the Astrid the Wombat scale of 1 to 10, as a fuel truck goes fast, truck. what would you rate the cocktails at Matahari out of, out of 10? So there's a whole bunch of different ones. The first one's the... I've had a few. Yeah, what was that one we had yesterday? Pina Colada. The Pina Colada out of 10? Uh, it was a good Pina Colada. It's actually the best cocktail there, I think. Uh, I would probably give it an 8. An 8 out of 10, folks? All right. Yeah. What else have you had? Um, oh, it's hard to remember if you can imagine. But I've had um, uh, margarita. Oh, so on a scale, Astrid the Wombat. Margarita scale of, was uh, out of ten. Probably only give it a three, a only three? because it was oh. just so strong. Like it was just. Yeah, don't you oh hate it God. when you get heaps of alcohol in your drink? <laughs> it was so strong it took my breath away. Um, <laughs> what a look. And then we had papaya daiquiri. Oh, out of ten. It was pretty good. I would give it a seven. A seven out of ten. Yeah. All right. Um, banana daiquiri had that too. Yeah, the banana daiquiri. I'd give it a seven as well. That's pretty good. And a pineapple daiquiri had that in the pool yeah. yesterday. I think it's probably an eight. And then I'll alter the pina colada to an eight point five. Oh, okay. Here we go. We're changing the scores. What we it's really like, want to have. It's like a Russian diving competition or something, isn't it? We really want to have a dragon fruit dra daiquiri. Oh, when you say we, which is we, not me. No, Shane and I are, oh, Shane, are yeah. after a dragon fruit daiquiri because um, mm. it just would be amazing. And every time they've run out of dragon fruit because you get dragon fruit juice for brekkie, which is amazing. Um, amazing. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. That's the Astrid the Wombat scale of cocktails. Be prepared into the future to uh, find uh, lesser or better quality or of the same quality cocktails and we'll rate them. We so should we'll film the later. cocktails. Oh, we'll film some later. We'll get some later and film them. Yeah, we will. Bill, tell us about your day. Skunky man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, my friend part of the day was uh, getting a couple's massage yeah. with uh, Shano behind Acc the camera. Accidentally, I believe. Oh, it was accidental, <laughs> but it was, it was a really happy accident. Yeah. I believe it was, um, yeah, pretty good. Uh, um, no, getting the final dives in today was pretty good. Yeah. yeah really good dives. That's good. Mm. That's good. Any, um, no panics today? No panics, no, no near death experiences. Nice, yeah, good. nice and relaxing dive. Yeah. Anything nice else? Oh, seeing you all rolled up was pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was waiting for, Dave. <laughs> uh, Dave, what was your highlight for today? Oh, I thoroughly enjoyed the, uh, the two dives this morning. Uh, the conditions were perfect, the weather um, beautiful, clear, blue sky, the uh, water was clear. Um, very comfortable dives. Um, you know, just great to be with you guys. Doing it, yeah, lovely. Good. Yeah. So we're pretty big on the whole family diving thing, aren't we? Yeah. With everyone. I like that. It's probably my favourite thing. But I mean, if I had to look at some individual stuff, we saw a ribbon eel today. Got some snaps of that. And if you don't mind, the uh, the seahorse looks a bit exhausted. Big new seahorse. Very good. You can tell I'm enthused. It's pretty good. Uh, I mean, we had to go top to 35 take a snap and then um, come back straight up. Sure but, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, I also like our guest interviewer tonight. That's pretty yeah. cool, yeah. yeah. You don't have to hold the camera. You've got Shane as the yeah. behind the camera. Shane is doing, cool. the, doing the camera work yeah. for us. And what have we got here? Oh, something special. What is it again? Margarita. It's got a flare yeah. on it. Nice. Check it out. It's a lime flower. Is it? Yeah. It shares what was your favourite part? My favourite part, hands down, I love diving with you guys, but Pygmy Seahorse, yep. I could have picked 100%. That. <laughs> um, tick, ticked it off, that was pretty cool. Um, also, this afternoon we did uh, Suki's Place and it was a nudie brain extravaganza. That was pretty good. Um, but diving with you guys was uh, epic, <laughs> epic diving. Yeah, really good. And you? Um, uh, my favourite dive was the Coral Garden. I thought that was really beautiful this morning. Um, yeah, it was great getting a couple's massage, but um, <laughs> like Gav said before, just diving with you guys and learning every day is just amazing. So um, it's hard to choose what my favourite part of the day was, but um, yeah, just in general, 
love hanging out with you guys, love diving with you guys, and um, love learning. So. That's awesome. Cool. And fireworks tonight. Yes, we can do fireworks. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a couple more of these. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 Yeah, beauty. Good work, everyone. <laughs> Oh, hello. Actually, famous last words. Uh, let's not die. I should not be in position of this. Well, it's going to come out of you, mate. <laughs> Jesus, I don't want any part of that. <laughs>